Hey there, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop, Tech Talk number 45. Have I got that backwards? I never know because Zoom reverses, reverses the camera. Or maybe I will go 45. How's that? That's, that's <laughs> right? Okay. Well, if you've got a tech question for, for us about your home voiceover studio, throw it in the chat room right now if you're watching on Facebook or over on YouTube, or if you're watching this on Smoke Signals, send them up. That helps a whole lot. And we'll get to those questions in a little while. But George and I got lots of cool stuff to talk about tonight, like... Big Sur and New Max. Oh, and, uh, well, that's pretty much it. No, no, no. I got a couple more things at the end, too. Trust me, for all you non-Mac people. But, uh, yes, there's a few things to talk about. All right. And we're going to talk about debreathing or breathing. Or not breathing at all. Everyone always asks, do I deep breath? Well, we'll get into that in just a little bit. So stay tuned. Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you. Now, George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hey there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. Tech Talk. Yes. Tech talk. tech talk. Everybody loves Tech Talk, especially George and I, because this is when we get to talk shop. Fun stuff. Now, you, you were going to mention last week, uh, because you're you're rebuilding your website. What's going on with that? Yeah, I so forgot. I, I feel bad. I didn't get forget to give a little plug to um, Karen and the team over there. They are building the new George the dot tech website. And that is no... First of all, that is no voice actor website. No. Second, and second of all, it is way more complicated. I mean, they said, yeah, you have like a hundred something pages. And I'm like, I do. Uh, <laughs> they accumulate after a while, don't they? Geez. So it's been a big project, but um, we're chiseling away at it. It's, it's just a lot of systems to build and make it work well. But, you know, maybe by the end of the year, we'll have something we can we can share with the world. But I just I'm. Karen's putting in a huge amount of time and having weekly check-in meetings with me. And it's just, they're really, um, you know, it was, it, it's been a real challenge because it doesn't fit any of the molds of anything they've done, but it's really coming along. And it has a whole new look, a new graphic design, everything. So it's, I'm excited about it. Thank you to Karen, Joe, and team over there that are making this the new site happen. Yeah, over at voiceactorwebsites.com. And, of course, why do you need a website, George? Because what do we do? We talk about and teach people and do technical support for people who have home voiceover studios. You don't think about, really, what a specialty this is. I mean, you and I have been doing this, you know, probably, you know, 30 years combined. Nobody else has been doing it that long. I mean, some people are like, yeah, I got a home studio. It's like... But you and I build them, you know, and we get people right. from from zero 
to getting up there and, and recording in a very short period of time, or if it's a little bit more involved or requires some construction, that's kind of like some of the stuff you do. If they want to work with you and, 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 you know, to learn stuff, but also if they want to build a voiceover palace, where do they go when they want to talk to you? Yes, it's, that's George the dot tech. Um, if that makes your brain short circuit, you can type in the good old domain name, George, the dot, uh, George, the tech. Dot See, you short circuit it right there. I know. Well, I've reprogrammed my brain and say George, the dot tech. Um, but both of them work. And, uh, again, the website is still functional. The old 10 year old Squarespace site still works. It's going to give you warnings saying there's no the SSL being. and, uh, the sky is falling and God knows what, when you go to the site, but trust me. If you do send money to book services with me, it is through secure channels. Trust me on that. Don't worry. Um, again, new websites coming, but you can book me over there for sound checks and studio consultations and processing chains and audiobook mastering workflows and whatever. It's all over there. Dan, you've got your own site that's still kicking over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. There it is. There it is. Homevoiceoverstudio.com. It's a, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I try to show people, you know, what it is that I do, which is I instruct. I'll take you, if you don't know what you're doing, I'll get you knowing what you're doing very quickly so you don't have to worry about it. I think it's probably one of the things that voice actors who are just starting out or they've been voice actors but haven't had a home studio, they tend to panic or freak out saying, I don't know anything. Work with me for a little bit, for an hour, hour and a half, and it's always a relief to see the tension leave their face. Like, oh, that's all it is? That's right. But, of course, you, I, I guess it's important to, you know, we try to make the complex simple because it is simple. It's complex if you look at it, but, you know, we, we can break it down into individual things that, help you get your home voiceover studio up and running and not worrying about it. You know, don't obsess about it. And whatever you do, don't go into all the forums saying, what processor should I use? Should I get this? Should I get that? Not a good idea. Talk yeah. to the experts. Talk to the pros. It, also, if you'd like to have your audio, if you've got a home studio and you want your audio analyzed, uh, if you scroll to the bottom of my homepage at homevoiceoverstudio.com, uh, you'll find my specimen collection cup and you click on that and you can submit a specimen to me for $25. I will give you a very thorough analysis because uh, I take my time on those. And it's like, here's what you need to do if you'd like more help, if you're really not have not doing it right. Like if you're recording through the microphone on your laptop, uh, we can we can fix that kind of stuff and get you working the right way. Anyway, that's the end of plug a palooza. <laughs> yes, that was a palooza. It's, it's, it's as it says in bold type there. Uh, what's in your tech update this week? A lot of Mac stuff, it looks like. Yeah, I know you guys. So many of you are Windows users, and you kind of get tired of us talking about this stuff. Um, you know, if if Windows, if the Windows sphere was doing something as in innovative, I think um, uh, as this, I would be talking about it. So if you're if I'm missing the boat on some Windows news or Windows things that are really innovative, that would you know, make a big difference to a, a voice actor's life, let us know. And I will definitely talk about it on the show. But the news right now is definitely about um, Big Sur. So Big Sur is the newest Mac OS. We've been waiting for it for a really long time. Actually, we've known it's coming. It always seems to come around October. This came roughly a month late. A lot of people blame COVID because of the, you know, it takes time to do this and some of the employees may not be working. So but Big Sur is out. It's Mac OS 11. It's not 10.16. <laughs> Catalina was 10.15. They've gone to a new one. Now it goes to 11. So that's the newest OS, and it is now going to pop up in your software updater. So if you're on a Mac and you get the little alerts to do updates, it might spook you a little bit. Reason being is when you go to the update window, it's going to look like when you do those updates that are being told that you're being told to do like security updates, it's also going to show big Sur is now available. And there's a button that says upgrade. 
And it's just not painfully obvious where to install the other updates. But when you click a little button that says more info, you'll now see security updates, Safari browser updates, and other system updates that you do want to keep installing. But do not click the upgrade button and go up to Big Sur. Yet. Yet? Um, <laughs> yet. It is yet. Bleeding. And yet. <laughs> it is brand new, bleeding edge OS. Um, you know, all the companies that make up the software we use, the audio interfaces we use and everything. Yes, some of them have been testing what they call beta versions of this, but the real, real version that goes out to the world is going to land in their desk at the same day as it does on yours. And that means they're going to be discovering all kinds of problems and bugs. And it's going to take them a, a couple of weeks to a couple of months to catch up, yeah. depending on the company. In other words, let somebody else may have problems with it. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, if you're a geek and or and or if you've got a couple of Macs and you have a you have one that's sort of a just sort of a an office machine that's not like your production studio computer. Um, if you're really adventurous, go ahead and install it on there with a backup already in place. Make sure you've used Time Machine and you've done a full system backup that you can always re fall back on or fall back to if Big Sur has any nasty surprises. Um, if you want to read more about whether Big Sur will work with your softwares right now, um, there's a website called Pro Tools Expert, and it's beyond just Pro Tools. They cover pretty much anything audio production related. It's at pro-tools-expert.com. Um, just do a search for Big Sur over there, and you can read their ultimate pro audio guide. Check it out today so that you know that uh, your system might, may or may not be Big Sur compatible. I will say, even if it is completely, quote unquote, compatible, hold off. Okay. All right. I say it every year. You, every OS. Yes. You have been warned. You have been warned. Okay. Um, I've already seen anecdotally somebody in the Twisted Wave Facebook group say, oops, I installed it. Uh -huh. But everything's working, so I'm okay. And so, you know, it's, it's going to work for some of you. No problem. <laughs> The thing that really has me more excited, way more excited than Big Sur, would be the new Apple um, hardware or the, the new, so what they call the silicon, the actual insides, the guts, the brains, the CPU, blah, 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 mm -hmm. that makes an Apple run. And this is the first major change since 2006 when they went from PowerPC to Intel. And that was a big leap forward then for those that remember. That's about when I leapt onto the Apple bandwagon was right about then. I believe my first Mac was a 2006 Mac mini. So that's when they really took a big boost in performance. Well, this time now, flash forward, they're having another massive leap forward in performance as a result of now using their own chip, which they're calling the M1 chip. Essentially, think of the iPad or the iPhone and the fact that Apple designs and manufactures essentially and even everything inside now instead of using an intel part they're using their own parts in the new macs now not all of them have it but the new macbook air mac book pro 13 inch and the new um mac mini which i was really excited to see the newest late 2020 versions have these new chips they're called m1 chips the thing is, I have one coming, by the way. So <laughs> I, I don't typically uh, leap on a new Mac the day it's announced, let alone the minute it's announced. But this time I did because I got caught up in the excitement of it all. I was watching my old friend Leo Laporte getting all nerding out and excited about the thing. I watched the, uh, the presentation. That was fantastic. And the second the, their store went online, I was like, Bye bye. bye. <laughs> and I bought I bought the most base base model of the MacBook Air for a thousand bucks. So eight gigs of memory, just the, the bare basics. I wish it had more storage. It only has 256 gig, but you can add storage so easily with a Thunderbolt drive or a USB drive. I'm not worried about that. It's just will the computer perform? And so here's the thing: like when you make something new or better you don't expect it to have to check a lot of different boxes. You might expect it to be 
maybe quieter or maybe faster or maybe have better battery life, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd expect at least one of those, maybe two. Right. But these new ones have all of them because their new chip, and I'll get a little terminology on you here, their SOC, the system on a chip, is so darn efficient and so power-consuming efficient that you get more battery life and you get better performance. Um, I could go down a rabbit hole. There's no reason for me to do it because Apple does it for you. Go to apple.com, watch the presentation, you know, gag a little bit on the overly produced production, you know, values that they do. But it is fascinating to see how these chips are designed. So, you know, classically on a PC or any older Mac, you've got a motherboard and then you've got memory and a CPU chip and a GPU chip, that's the graphics card, the graphics adapter. But now all of that's inside the, the main CPU, now called a system on a chip, because that's what it is. It's a, the whole computer is on a chip and everything else is just, you know, USB jacks, a keyboard, a display, you know, it's all on a chip. It's just, it's just mind boggling what these guys are doing. Um, not only that, the, the benchmarks, and now a benchmark is something that's used to measure the performance of any computer. The benchmarks are starting to come out. There's enough uh, people getting the hardware now to run these things called benchmarks. And the, 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 the specs are mind boggling. <laughs> um, so I'll just talk about what's called single core performance. So the thing has, um, an M1 chip has eight cores. Okay, so even the $1,000 MacBook Air that anybody's going to buy for their kid to go to school has eight processing cores. Okay, that's amazing, right? Well, every one of those cores performs faster than a single core in an Intel i9 iMac. You're kidding. So like a $3,000 wow. dollar iMac, a loaded iMac, the MacBook Air is faster. Whoa. Um, than that. <laughs> right. Hard to imagine. I mean, um, so it's, it's faster. I mean, it'll run a program. Does it, does it mean it can run more complex programs faster or is it, if you add too much stuff to it, is it that going to throw a little bit of molasses into the gears? This is what we have to find out. So theoretically, everything it does will be faster. Not just because the CPU is faster, the clock, what they call the clock speed of a single core is faster. Um, it's because all of the moving parts that aren't moving at all anymore, they're just nine trillion transistors in a little square like this. <laughs> Everything is happening inside that chip. Memory is in there. Um, and so the, the speed that things can travel through that chip is really, really fast. So there should be very little of that molasses effect. There should be really none. Um, the spinning pinwheel should be completely a thing of the past. I don't think you'll ever see it again um, with these new machines. They should be rocket, like grease lightning. One more thing. I know I'm geeking out here, but this is just stuff that's pretty amazing. The, the, what you're going to be running when you get your new Mac with M1 is going to be something called, um, it's called, sorry, I lost that page on my notes, Rosetta 2. <laughs> Dan, do you remember something called Rosetta way back in the day when Intel Mac came out? It's, to me, Rosetta is, is is a language program. I hardly remember. The well, other yeah, language. I think that's why they call it that. It's a translator. Right. So they have to trans. So if you're going to run, let's say, Twisted Wave or Adobe Audition or anything that's currently for a Mac, it has to translate that that language into something the M1 chip can understand. Okay, they are not speaking the same language. So something else called Rosetta 2 has to run at the same time. What I just said, the fact that the MacBook Air is faster than the i9 loaded thing, that's while running Rosetta. The over, so it's running an additional thing to translate. It's still faster with Whoa. the translation. So keep that in mind. The, the software you're going to be using for at least a couple of weeks to a couple of months they're going to be translated to run on the new machine, and still it's going to be faster than almost anything. If you're running a native app, what's going to be called a universal binary, I think it's what they call it, it's going to be even faster. Wow. So it's going to be like another 20% faster. 
Right. It's so, it's just kind of amazing. Like, so if you're um, rendering a file or something like that, and it'll go like that, as opposed to MP3 saving. Yeah. You guys know MP3 takes a while, right? You're used to WAV files saving pretty much like that, and MP3 are like, come on, let's. I just want to get send this audition, audition out. Yeah. You know, that's going to go bloop. It's going to be a lot, lot faster when it's doing that mathematically intensive stuff like saving MP3s, saving movies, exporting videos from iMovie, whatever it is you're doing. Anything that's crunching numbers is going to be much, much faster. Really, everything's going to be faster. Waking the computer up. It's going to be cool. I um, Anyway, I'm going to, one is literally coming from Shanghai. It's supposed to be here tomorrow, which would be a week ago because this show is being seen a week later. So by the time you're seeing this, I will have already gotten it and played around with it. But you'll definitely be hearing more about it. So I will stop talking about it now because that's probably enough about talking about something I don't actually have. Good. Um, a couple more little things. If you're not going to go out and spend $1,000 on a Moon MacBook, Take the one you already got and do a little maintenance on it. And namely, clean it. And I don't just mean like using an app like Mac Cleaner. I mean, literally clean it. I just took my daughter's MacBook Air into the Apple store. Not the Apple store, but just like a local tech little tiny hole in the wall place. Because mm -hmm. it was missing a whole bunch of screws and the battery door on the bottom was falling off, you know. And the guy's like, well, the battery is swelling. You're going to need a new battery soon. But otherwise, it's okay. But I look inside and I'm horrified because it's full of cat hair. <laughs> so, because I know they have cats at her house. Get your Macs cleaned. If it's overheating and her mom was saying her computer's literally been shutting down from overheating, that's a big cause of that. The thing can't cool. If your, your cooling system is literally wearing a wool sweater knitted, knitted out of cat hair, <laughs> dog hair, it is not going to cool. It's going to overheat. The fan's going to run faster. It's going to be a mess. So it's a very, very inexpensive fix, depending on the computer, to get it cleaned out. And uh, if you can't get it into the store, it's not handy, get some compressed air and at least blow it through any opening you can see. And hopefully some of it will come out the other side. But man, does hopefully. that make a huge difference. <laughs> Yeah, we a, forget. Get it's a room, hidden yeah. thing. It's totally inside. You can't see it. But man, yeah, get I was a, horrified. Get a Roomba for your Mac. We just got a Roomba. It's like it. You got to empty it every five minutes. It's like either our yeah. floors are really dirty, or you know, our new dog is shedding a lot more than we can really tell. Yeah, you know, those but, things do empty, uh, fill up quick. Yeah, but watching it, like, all right, it's trying to figure out where it's going. I, it's all right. Go home. You know, and like. <laughs> off it goes <laughs> this is Google what happens when you get really bored yeah, yeah if you're really bored just look for a cat on a Roomba you <laughs> um, last thing this is completely universal advice like the last thing not just Apple um, I don't know why I know this device has been around for a really long time but I just don't know why it hasn't like clicked for me to start recommending it you guys know how much uh, audio is affected by rumble. Like if you're using your typical large diaphragm condenser mic, like a Neumann TLM 103 is a huge offender of this. The, the VO1A, the Rode NT1, any mic that has no internal switch for taking out the rumble, a low cut switch or a high pass switch, it's the same thing. Um, you're going to have rumble in your audio. And most of you don't have interfaces with rumble filters or low cut twitches, right? You're just going to be recording what comes in and seeing noise in your file. If you're in a multi-unit building or an apartment or a condo, plugging in the sure a one five or a 15 HP, it could be the, the answer about 48 bucks, something like that on Amazon. I threw it up on my home video studio now.com page. Um, if you're trying to find it and it just adds this gentle low end, uh, roll off. So at hundred Hertz, it's sloped down a bit by about three DB. And then from there, it just keeps going down. So for some of you, maybe for some of you, it may thin out the low end slightly too much. If you have a very thunderous low end voice, but for the vast majority of you, and certainly all, all the women voices out there it's going to get a, get you a cleaner audio signal. It's just a little device that plugs between the mic and it plugs right into the mic cable and then into the mic, or you can plug the other, plug it at the other end 
into the scarlet or whatever you're using. That's probably what I would do because it'd be really awkward to have this, this metal tube sticking about four inches up out of your mic, you know, going to a cable. And that's what it is. It's just a metal tube that plugs in, but that can help you get cleaner audio. Dan, have you ever used anything like that? Um, no, usually it's, it's like, you know, if I, I look at it I can, you know, try to dial in exactly where there is some rumble and then take it out from there. Uh, but never, I usually don't do it on the front end. Well, you, I, you, you know how I am about front end stuff. Yeah, I know. I mean, in your place, you're, you're on a concrete slab in a pretty quiet space. You probably don't have a big rumble issue. No, um, no. Yeah. It's probably rare. Like, but I'm, I hear audio all the time from people in apartments and condos. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Rumble galore, sometimes really bad. And, um, you know, I'll tell them here, here's how you apply a high pass filter and, you know, set it up in audacity or whatever. And that's fine. But when they're doing that source connect or IBDTL session and the studio, you know, pops up their $10,000 monitor speakers and the woofers are going, <laughs> right. They may not like that that much. Right. So that that's could be where helpful you would use one, something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. That's it for me. All right. Hey, you know, if you've got a tech question about your home voiceover studio, you can throw it in the chat room right now if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube. I know Jeff Holman is hiding in there somewhere, taking down your questions mm -hmm. because we do want to answer those. So put them in there right now so we can get them into the next segment. You know, think about what question would I like to ask? If I got a real problem, throw it in there. I wanted to talk tonight, or whatever time you're watching this, about debreathing. Uh, because I get this a lot from people saying, I debreath. Well, do you turn blue in the process? Um, you know, it's they, they say debreath like I record, I debreath, I right. like they it's like it's literally like they, every single thing they record. Right. And and debreathing the, is just, you know, yeah. compulsory. I always debreath. I have to debreath. Here's the here's the thing though. You know, if you talk to Uncle Roy or a couple of other people who are, you know, audio engineers, they're like, "Do you really want to do that?" Because it doesn't sound natural. I mean, a lot of problems that we hear from a lot of audiophiles is that it's like it sounds very robotic. Why? Because you're not breathing. If you're doing if you're doing an actual like script with somebody else, if you're doing like a little radio play for a commercial or something or for an e-learning thing, when we talk to other people, we breathe. Now, when when I was a kid, and I used to watch Eyewitness News back in Buffalo. Maybe some people from Buffalo or Toronto remember Irv Weinstein, who was, you know, unfortunately left us. The guy was a great newscaster, and my father said, watch what he does before he starts a story. And he would go, <gasps> Buffalo Blaze Busters went into a three-story frame dwelling and fled on foot into it. You know, that sort of thing. It was, he invented the, the eyewitness news pattern. But he would take a really deep breath. What I'm finding is, you know, I, I tend to do that too when I'm recording. And I'm like, but I plan for it so I can read an entire sentence without taking a breath. Maybe two sentences. The fewer breaths you take, the f less work you have to do on the on the back end when you're when you're editing. But I wanted to talk about do you deep breath? Well, if you're one of those people that finds that they have to breathe between every third word, yeah, maybe. Or perhaps you need to look at your physical conditioning and think about that a little bit more. Yeah. But I wanted to do a little demonstration of what you can do if you if you have a a, a breath issue. Let's okay. go into our good friend Audacity here. And uh, because, audition, W audition, uh, audition, yes. And mm -hmm. you know, because I know this this will work. There, there we go. All right, so, please. So now, now we're seeing my voice on here. When you take a breath, it looks like that, <sighs> like a football. Exactly, like 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 an egg or a football. So let me read some copy here. Uh, here here's here's the information card from the Echo Dot. It's like things to try. Enjoy your favorite music. Alexa, play music. Alexa, play music for a party. Alexa, play hip hop music. Alexa, play the station KXCP. You know, that sort of thing. All right. So here we have this. As you can see, I took a couple of breaths here. How do you get rid of a breath? You have several options. One, you could just delete the breath. So, so you can all hear this. Breath, it looks like that. 
Here's the other thing. You, now you can delete it, and that way it's gone. Here's a really good trick that you might want to try. You can highlight it and standard-wise take it down 15 dB, which, you know, in audition yeah, you can do... 12 to 15 seems to be a good range. Yeah, because why, why 15? Because then it sounds like a natural breath. breath. It looks like that. You know, that extra one, get rid of that. You know, but if you go through it... Exactly, like, like, like an egg or a football. So let me read some copy here. Uh, here here's, here's the information card from the Echo Dot. So, things to try. Enjoy, enjoy your favorite music. Alexa, play music. All right, same thing. If I if I take all of these down, 15... D, and, you know, you can just type in minus 15, which makes it a lot easier. You can um, also make favorites in Adobe yeah, Audition. Absolutely. Do that with a keystroke. Exactly. You know, or just take it down 15. I mean, in a 30 second audition, I mean, how much time is this going to take you? You know? Right. And now play it's. Music. Alexa, play music. Alexa, play music for a part. It makes it sound far more natural. So that's, that's what I do when I, when I'm, when I'm recording and say I, I it's, you know, it's not like we don't see copy with no punctuation where you go through about five sentences and it's like. <gasps> Sometimes, well, I, sometimes you, know, you got to do that. <laughs> I've been helping people with this, the conundrum of deep breathing or not, or how or what quite, quite a bit. And, um, you know, one thing occurred to me, Dan, I don't know if what you feel about this is what's the last time you listened to, let's say a podcast or a web stream or anything live or even a show and thought to yourself, boy, I sure wish I heard a lot less breaths. Uh, does that ever happen? Never. Not once. Okay, so unless someone is so, like breathing between every third word, but the, I mean, do you ever, do you really ever hear that happen on like an actual show? No, no, because people don't speak that way. That's I mean, right. unless you are literally have a, as Dan mentioned, a, a physical breathing problem that you're, you know, um, God bless you, you're working around it and trying to get a project done. I understand. Um, everybody else, uh, if you breathe normally. Um, you're not likely to gonna gonna have a big breath issue. You know, if you do have to slip a breath in because you just didn't take a big enough breath, that might be one you want to remove for timing's sake. Um, that's another reason to remove a breath. It's just the timing doesn't feel right. There's a loss of the rhythm. Um, but um, how often do they need to be removed? Uh, is it really is it really that big of a deal? No. I ask. It's not. Rhetorically. It's, it's not that big of a deal. So I, I think people tend to over-obsess about this kind of stuff. I mean, a lot of voice actors obsess about a lot of stuff. Much, sure. But also like, Why didn't what, I get hired? Why didn't I get hired? Yeah. Why didn't I get hired? You know, it's uh, it's like, is it my sound? Well, if you, look, if you, you think it's your sound, send George or I some audio and we'll go, it's yeah. what you're listening on because your yeah. audio sounds fine. Yeah. Uh, but breathing is one of those things that we, we, we do naturally. Uh, and if you're in good shape, you don't have to take a, <gasps> take a breath. You can, you know, a, a quick little breath. And, you know, if you run out of air somewhere in a sentence, yeah, you can edit that out, but it also helps to pre-plan your breaths as you're reading copy. And these are the things you don't really think about because it's like, well, I can technologically take care of it. How about doing everything you can physically to avoid having to do something technologically? Right. Because you're probably a better voice actor than you are an editor. Just guessing. Yes. <laughs> it, it um, Editing takes years to really master. I mean, I've been doing it well, since the Ford administration. So it's, <laughs> I, I know what it, what it takes to so do that. So does voice acting. But, right. you know, it, you're probably spending more time practicing the craft of voice acting. Absolutely. Than the art of, or the art and the craft I should careful how I use those words, but you know what I mean? Like editing is a thing that also takes a lot of practice. Which would, should you be better practicing? Which should you be practicing? I should say probably voice acting. Voice if acting. you have a music background, by the way, you have a huge advantage. Absolutely. Because you're already accustomed to finding where breaths fit in and musical no, music notation. They do tell you where to take breaths. They actually will have a little apostrophe. Right. right. <laughs> I'm reminded that as I practiced tr uh, trumpet and clarinet with my daughter this morning, I saw breath marks in the 
stunningly stunning rendition of um, Hot Cross Buns <laughs> that we were playing. For just a few notes. Dum, dum, dum. Anyway. Sorry. All right. So that's my take on deep breathing and George's take on deep breathing. And now we'll take a breather and we'll take a break and we'll come back with your questions. We still got room in the chat room. If you have a question, go to uh, the chat room and write down your home voiceover studio tech question. Or if you got a problem or something, we want to hear about it. And we'll get to it right after these. In a world of voices, one place wasn't VO Buzz Weekly. VoiceOver Body Shop, the better one. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. You are the first to know about a new Mac app from VO Heroes called Audio Cupcake. Audio Cupcake creates beautiful audiobook and podcast audio files that meet the technical standards of ACX, Audible, Findaway, and all podcast platforms. The free version of Audio Cupcake does just what Levelator does, RMS normalization and compression ready to be post-processed in your sound software. Unlock the premium version and Audio Cupcake finishes the job by peak normalizing your WAV files to minus 3 dB and outputting them as 192K MP3s ready to upload immediately. No more post-mastering your mastering. It's a huge time saver. Starting this Friday, download Audio Cupcake for free at audiocupcake.com. And for Black Friday through Cyber Monday, you can unlock the premium version, normally $19.95, for just 12 bucks. That's a 40% discount. And use the coupon code Black Friday when you upgrade in the app. That's audiocupcake.com. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. Source Connect. You've heard of it, right? You, you haven't? Okay, if you haven't heard of it by now, you probably don't need it. If you have heard of it by now, you don't need to watch this ad, so we'll keep this short. Point is, you should have Source Connect if you want to be considered a professional voice actor. Many, 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 many of the big paying gigs are using it. So go over to source-elements.com, get signed up, learn how to use it, be ready to rock. You don't even have to buy a license anymore. That's, that's old school. You don't have to buy the software outright. You don't even have to have a subscription anymore. You can now pay by the day, or I think it's a two-day pass. So you have no excuse. Make sure it's up and running. Go watch my videos on how to make it work at georgethetech.com slash SC and be ready because you're going to, when you're, when you're called upon, you want to make sure you know what to do. Source-elements.com. Thanks for your support. Let's get to those questions. All right. Why don't we? That's why we're here. We love to answer questions. Anyway, Woo let's start off with Niznik Joe, or is it Joe Niznik? He calls himself Niznik Joe. We'll go with Let's that. Go with it. What's he asking here? I'm using a moving blanket PVC pipe set up with a fine mic. One of those fine products from China, I think. Okay. Um, how good is that for a starter <laughs> setup? And can it be used for a good demo? Sure, why we not? We don't know because we don't know what it sounds like. And if it sounds good, it is good. And if it don't sound good, it ain't. Yeah. So whatever the fine mic is, if it sounds awesome... Clean, clear, no noise, no distortion. If it startles you when you play it through speakers, your cat thinks you're talking to the cat, it's probably a good mic. Really? 
I know you're going to Google a fine right as I am speaking here without a doubt because you're fast on – your fingers are fast when, when when we get to that kind of stuff. I, I, that name looks familiar. That looks like one of those direct-to-Amazon products that right. you see showing up online. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of those. A lot of people say, I'm using this or that, and I'm like, i never heard of it. And it's like 54 bucks. Oh, I'll bet it's just wonderful. There are some oddballs out there. I've seen YouTube reviewers who get these mics sent to them. Even me with my poultry number of subscribers get offered microphones from God knows where to be reviewed. Yeah. And I almost always turn it down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of those out there. And once in a while, they luck into them not being crappy. Yeah, occasionally. You know, if you, if, you know, but again, to me, it's always what's the physical setup. And what, yeah. what, what Nisnik Joe is asking here is, just, will that work? Well, it depends. It could. And this is the other thing that whenever you ask a question, whenever you have a concern about, will this work? Will that work? There's only one way to find out, and that's for us to hear it. And which is why we have, you know, our, our, our on our sites, I've got my specimen collection cup. You've got, you know, your, your system for, for taking uh, files. We're and listening to see what's going on. You know, people say, it's a buzz, it's a hum, it's a, a this, it's a that. And I'll go, well, it's not a hum, it's a buzz. And, I'll go, well, but it, <laughs> and, and, and what's, right. the dif what's the difference between a hum and a buzz? Well, yeah. a hum, th they're different frequencies. They occur for different right. reasons. We know that stuff. You don't. But if you don't, if you just use a descriptive word, it sounds, you know, metallic. Like, okay. It sounds orange and I want it to sound more yellow. Yellow, yeah. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> so what does that mean yeah if you're going to ask a question about something like that it always helps to send an actual sample so we can hear exactly what you're talking about but a pvc booth with moving blankets if you're in a quiet room those things work fabulous yeah you know, there there it's a it's a quick and easy solution but you have to be in a quiet room if you're in a noisy room or something like that it's going to cause a problem because moving blankets are transparent sound wise, but they do absorb sound so it doesn't reflect back to you. Right. But I, I found a lot of people who have an outbuilding, like, uh, you know, like a, a small cabin behind their house or, you know, a utility shed that's actually pretty big. Those are great because they're away from the house. And if you're not in a noisy neighborhood, you put one of those up there. It sounds better than some studios I've heard around here. Mm -hmm. So, yep. True. Yeah. Uh, the one Jeff Holman. Jeff Holman asks, uh, thanks, George, for putting up the comparison from Mac Rumors about Geekbench's speed tests of the M1 chip. But it says that the processor speed is 3.2 gigahertz on all three machines, mini MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. Notice how I took a breath there. Uh, do you expect the processor speeds to be the same on all three machines rather than following the past protocol of the air having a slower processor than the mini and the pro. Wow. Well, I, there's no way I can know that yet. Um, the fact that they're using from what I can see, it's an M one chip. It's an M one chip. It's an M one chip. I don't, as far as I know, there's no variations between M1 chips yet. I could be completely wrong about that when the specs come out for all the machines, which I think they already are. But from what I've seen, they all have the M1 chip. Maybe there's going to be like an M1 Pro or an M1X or an M2 or some other higher level, more complex chip, which I'm sure there will be eventually. Um, you know, on the phones, where are we at? The A14X Bionic or whatever the processor is now. So, you know, there's going to be upgraded chips eventually, but this is what's really bizarre is the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, and the Mac Mini, as far as I can tell, have exactly the same brain inside. So you're getting the same performance on all of them. MacBook Pro has a, has a fan. How did I not even mention this? The MacBook Air does not have a fan. I completely forgot to mention that. One of the reasons I'm so damn excited about it. The MacBook Air doesn't have a fan. It's silent. No more random fans coming on because of Zoom and Google Hangouts. And, ah, oh, thank you. Finally, a fanless MacBook. The MacBook Air has no fan. The MacBook Pro does have a fan um, because, um, watch the video. Go to Apple Watch. They'll, they'll explain why it has a fan. But it basically allows it to sustain higher 
uh, clock speeds over time without overheating. Um, and then the Mac Mini also has a fan for the same reason. I would love to have all of them. I'd love to have the Mac Mini to replace my 2018 here. Maybe I'll do that someday, but it's fine for what I'm doing. I'm not doing a lot of heavy lifting. Right. The only time I've ever heard the fan go on on my computer is when I'm rendering video. Yeah. Ne never with audio. It's Yeah, never. Solid. It's just never. It's always a video-related task because now more of the cores are being used and the GPU processor is being used and all that stuff is going to play. That gets really, really hot. That's yeah. why those fans come on. Yeah. Well, you ask for questions, they flood in. Yes. Let's roll through some of these. Uh, Jay Horace Black has a bunch of questions. He says, hey, so I have questions from two other people who watched the show tonight, and the last one is my question. One, <laughs> on your website, Gentlemen. yes, on your website, do you have the AKG Pro audio headphones on your suggested headphones? Do you still like the Bear Dynamic DT770s, or has that changed? Oh, I guess he's referring to my yeah, my your, your website. Yeah. Studio now yeah. com page. Yeah. Um, why didn't I put the DD70s? I don't know why I didn't put them on there. I guess just because they're a lot more expensive than the Audio Technicas. And so I, I just didn't bother putting them on there. But yeah, I'm, I still use them. I, as you can see, I'm wearing them right now. Yeah, and are. I do still recommend them. I have gone through a couple pairs of DT770s when the drivers start going buzz, buzz, buzz. And it comes and goes. It's kind of weird. My, my right one's been doing it lately. Um, but, you know, I haven't used the Audio Technicas for 10 years like I have these. So I don't know. But I, I, I yeah, I still use them and I still like them. Yeah. All right. Uh, he asks, you also have the Personas or the Persona News er, 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 <laughs> Eris Near Field Studio Monitors. Is there another option you like? Oh, man. Of course, of course there are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's no studio <laughs> monitors out there. I... Yeah, I mean, it's like there's so many dang options. I mean, you know, and so many companies are making similar speakers at similar price points. And but I just I found that you know, anecdotally, from as as many people as I've worked with, I'm hearing more that people like those, so I recommend them more than others. Um. I haven't heard a lot of people saying that they fail on them or burn out or buzz or anything. So that's probably why I've been recommending them. And they're, they're not expensive. So again, I'm, I'm big on recommending things that are cost effective, um, very, you know, high value. And I find these to be that to, to be the case. Yeah. So yeah. that's why they're the ones I've been recommending, but there's nothing wrong with the KRKs and the Mackies right. and the Yamahas. I, I use HS fives, uh, Yamaha yes. HS fives. I love them. They're great. On and on. And, and, lo and, going. and loved my rocket fives until I blew out a, a woofer in one of them. <laughs> it happens. I won't say how. Uh, yeah. Twisted Wave. Is there a way to easily add music, a music track to dry audio? In Twisted Wave? No, no not really. <laughs> If you're on no. a Mac and you want to add music, just do it in GarageBand. Exactly. <laughs> use a free program GarageBand or use Audacity. Um, but no, it's not easy. Yes, there's hacky ways to do it. And people sometimes do it because they they like saying, I did it in Twist a Wave. But no, it's not a multi-track software. It's not made for multi-track production. Moving on. Yes. No, it's, it, yeah, it, it's really for single track audio, which is why we like it. All right. You get to read number four. since you I know guess this. this is actually now... Um, this is Horace, Horace Jay Horace's game. actual question. I have a 5 by 4 booth, as I know. Uh, I need to get a mount to put the 27-inch 4K monitor that I have in my booth, as well as something to hold the keyboard in place right now. I have it jerry-rigged on a stool. Um, Booked book and the monitor stand. Books, I guess. From floor to top of the monitor, it's about 68 inches. Do you have any recommendations I can use for my booth? Depends. Do you want it on the wall or do you want it freestanding on something that you can move around and raise and lower? Um, I'm more and more of a fan now of having adjustable height desks that you put everything on so you can sit or stand. There's a bunch of them on Amazon now that you just literally squeeze a little hydraulic lever like a chair, like one of these. <laughs> they have those on desks now oh now i'm higher than i was before <laughs> down Oops. um they have those on desks now so you can raise and lower a desk with a pull of a lever and an electrical left there's electric lift ones i'm more into that i like that everything moves up and down you can be at any height 
and it's more universal. You can mount everything to the wall, which is fine, but then it's a lot more difficult to move everything up and down when it's mounted to a wall. There are very few really good systems for having a keyboard, monitor, mouse on an arm that can go up and down or, you know, so I, I, that's why I'm not as much into that solution. And it ends up being a lot more expensive usually to do it that way. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Go with the desk. Yeah. Fred North says, what would your reaction be if I told you I run Windows 7 Professional on an iMac? Would your head explode like in the book Scanners? <laughs> Actually, I have I have VMware running on my Mac that loads Windows 7. Okay, cool. And I have to run SoundForge. Right. Or, Audas or Audition 3.0 for somebody, you know? Yes. Well, pro <laughs> Professor North says, uh, I'm comfortable with my favorite programs and don't want to change. Nobody you says know, you got to do anything. We're just making recommendations. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's yeah. Not there's, mandatory. There's, it's not mandatory. <laughs> you don't have to be the cool kids. You don't have to buy the new thing. You don't have to get sucked into the upgrade vortex. Uh, thankfully, as long as there's virtual machines and boot camp, you can stick with your old Audition 1.5 or Cool Edit Pro or Saw or. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever that thing is. Really? It only runs on Windows. Yeah. You can keep it. Yes. Miss B asks, Mr. Leonard, are you still selling those VO suits? Or oh, is man. The uh, studio suit, as it was called. Not <laughs> at the moment. Uh, it, was, it was a fun thing to do for a year, and I sold a lot of them, and I know a lot of people still using them, and they work great. There's still some in this studio and in my booth and stuff like that. But trying to manufacture that stuff is not what I want to do. I am a voice actor and a technical advisor, and I'm not very good with a sewing machine. So it's dang hard. It is. Ask ask Rick Wasserman's <laughs> wife who sews the caps for the tri booth. Absolutely. That is not easy to <laughs> broke a lot of needles on that canvas. Sure has. Uh Mike um, Gordon yeah, Mike Gordon says, uh, thank you. What for is this? This stuff works great. The first time I put this up my nose, I thought it scalded the back of my eyeballs. Reason I asked, didn't want to scald my throat. Why? Because we're talking about alcohol. Uh, if oh, you, thank you for telling me that. I, I was, I was like, going to get to that. WTF. Yeah. <laughs> what are you Al talking about? Yes. Here, we just happen to have a bottle here. Alcohol. It's A L K A L O L. You can find it at the drugstore. It's not, it's, you know, just ask the pharmacist for it. Mix it 20 to 1 with water, 20 parts water, one part alcohol. Put it in a sprayer. This stuff gets rid of mouth clicks. <laughs> Pay attention over there. All right. <laughs> Anyway, oh, yes, it, it reduces his editing time. Absolutely. That's the editing time is reduced to a listen through with timing changes for the most part. What a blessing. Thank you for the tip. You're welcome. Great. Last question. Last question from Sonia. Sonia. Oh, yes. So, I, I recognize that name. <laughs> um, George, you've already helped me a little bit with my setup for my home studio. Thank you for that. I have maybe a dumb question, but I am recording into a Lenovo ThinkPad laptop, and I know that when you see Source Connect already. Take a breath! Take a <laughs> breath! <laughs> There's no commas. What am I supposed to breathe? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It just ties into the deep breathing thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. I'll do that again. George, you've already helped me a little bit with my setup for my home studio. Thank you for that. I have maybe a dumb question, but I am recording into a Lenovo ThinkPad laptop, and I know that when you use Source Connect or any of those platforms, you are required to be connected via Ethernet for a more reliable connection. I don't have Ethernet on my computer. What do I do? What do you Almost do? Almost nobody does. I mean, Ethernet ports are, are considered obsolete by the tech industry, apparently. Apple specifically, <laughs> they don't really have them anymore. Um, but even, yeah, the, all of the Ultrabooks, light, 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 the lightweight laptops have no Ethernet ports. Part of the reason being that those ports are big, so you need a pretty thick computer just to fit the thing in there. Not a big deal. Um, there's a million USB to Ethernet adapters. They're generally under $20. They're on Amazon. I do have one on homevostudionow.com. There's one for USB, there's one for USB-C, um, which I don't know which one yours has, but um, 
there are plenty of them. Just do a quick search for a USB to Ethernet adapter. Um, I like to get one that's a hub as well. So, because if you're going to take up a port just for Ethernet, you might as well it also have it have multiple functions. So, I like it when they have a couple of USB ports and an Ethernet port. So that's what I look for. Okay. Um, but uh, yes, not a big deal. Okay, cool. Hey, you know, if you got a question for us, you know, if you think of it sometime during the week, or if you're watching the show in replay, which many of you do. Uh, write to us at the guys at V-O-B-S dot TV. And uh, you get your questions answered during the show, just like that. Uh, we love getting your questions. That's really what this show is all about. We really want to hear from you. And uh, where else are you going to get these answers? Where? My daughter just wandered in the room unceremoniously, and she's chewing an ice cube. Everybody loves the sound of a chewing of an ice cube, right? Yes. Yes. So on that note, it's time to take a break and we'll be back to wrap things up right after this. Hello. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. It's a place where you can get your body shopped with voices. Come on. Look at Dan's head. So shiny. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, Okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the VoiceOver Body Shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Well, we may not be traveling a whole lot, but if you are, and you got to be able to record on the road, here's the way to do it. With a Harlan Hogan Porta Booth Plus, easy to handle, easy to get onto a plane, it fits right into a luggage rack, no problem, and... More importantly, the Porta Booth Plus is made with real Oralex. Not that fake stuff you get at Banjo Emporium. This is specially made to make sure that your sound is just right when using the Harlan Hogan Porta Booth Plus. Where can you get one? Very easy. Go on over to voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Look on their front page. You'll see the Porta Booth Plus and the Porta Booth Pro at voiceoveressentials.com. Voiceoveressentials.com. Get your Porta Booth Plus now. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back just to say goodbye. But we got a few things we got to cover here. Like, you know, next week we'll have another great guest on this show. If there's somebody you want to see on the show, somebody you think is important and has something to offer, 
uh, to the voiceover community, write to us at theguys at vobs.tv and say, hey, I'd like to see this person on there. And we'll take care of that. If, Type it if, on your 1998 Microsoft Natural Keyboard. Right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, who are our donors this week, Mr. Widom? Our donors include Michael Kearns, Christy Burns, Graham Spicer, Antland Productions, Michelle Blanker, Sarah Borges, Rob Ryder, and Michael Gordon. All righty. Hey, you know, you can still send us your pictures of your studio. We haven't been using them because, you know, we have this $10 million set that we've been been using. We got to pay that off first. Yeah, it's so <laughs> it's why we need the donations. Um, but uh, send those in. Make sure they're in landscape, not portrait. Um, and uh, let's take a look at your studio. Maybe you'll find George and I sitting in there. Once we all get to be- get back together, you know, now that apparently there'll be a vaccine sometime in the next six months. That's right. And maybe it'll be on my, if, if, if maybe for now, it'll be on my rotating desktop of previously submitted booths. Yeah, we have a whole Rolodex. Right there on my these. screen over my shoulder. Oh, cool. Oh, look at all those. Excellent. All right. <laughs> uh, we need to uh, thank our sponsors, of course. Yep. Guys like... Harlan Hogan, VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. Also, Jeff Holman, great job in the chat room tonight getting us those questions and BS. Speaking of which, uh, and (laughs) Sumerlino for doing a great job over switching all the stuff to make it look like an actual TV show. And... Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Again, you got questions for us, the guys at VOBS.TV. If you need help with your home studio and you want to work with George, you go to GeorgeThe.Tech. And you get over to Dan's place at HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. All right. Have yourselves a great week, everybody. But remember, it's just voiceover. It's not rocket science. But when it comes to your home studio... If it sounds good, it is good. Have a good night, everybody, and have a good week, and we'll see you next time on VoiceOver Body Shop.